Hello, anybody here in the room, please uh, write something in the chat. Anybody here? Just checking the connection. You see me, you hear me, I'm gonna share the screen like that. Uh, please make a note if you are uh, seeing the screen. All right. Hi. Uh, sometimes there is uh, no UX resources on your project and uh, nobody knows maybe what UX is. Maybe you don't even need to know, but one day you need UX resource and there is nobody except of you. You are maybe a developer or some other profession and you don't do that uh, on a daily basis. Um, I am Daria. UX expert and Java team lead in Experis Cyber Norway. Um, today we will talk about user experience and you will get tips on how to apply this UX kit in your daily life as, for example, developer. Um, without losing your sanity, and um, you will find out like what need you are solving and what solution you will make and you will learn to validate the solution i would really appreciate some feedback in the chat some kind of hi or something that i would know that you are here and you see my screen we will talk about design process and ux role uh, about uh, phases of design thinking on the first part where you solve the need and then after you decided what kind of need you're solving, what solution will be. So, yeah, let's go. Design process. Uh, design thinking is a human-centered approach and it integrates needs of users possibilities of technology and requirements from business success. So in the sweet spot in between, we have successful solutions. In Norway, it is very popular user-centric uh, approach. State and all the communal services have started with using this human-centered approach as a basis for all the tenders they send out. On the picture, you see a paper figure team who actually uh, was designed by Oslo municipality and he won the prize, a normal prize that usually humans win for being the digitalisering uh, leader, year's leader for digitalization. Um, and user centric uh, is in the heart of strategies of very known companies like Microsoft, Google, Apple, Lego, uh, App, uh, and like, yeah, Google. Um, and it is selling well, adding design in the innovation of uh, the processes. You can see that it doubles up the returns to stakeholders and also revenues. And just one of the research is made by McKinsey. So it pays off to use this. Now about design thinking, before we like go into this real tips that you really need, just a little bit about the mindset. So human in the center, as we talked about, and of course, it's a collaborative uh, working collaborative.
creating something. You test it on the way as you come up with ideas. Also, this approach is iterative, so you kind of find out, okay, this is uh, wrong, let's do something else, and it's absolutely normal to, to you know, change the direction. And also, you have to, like, uh, think beyond just a redesign. You just think radically. Maybe you'll invent something extremely uh, cool. And this process goes into stages, empathize, define, ideate, prototype, test, like after each other, but you can always go back to any stage because, as I say, it's iterative process. And all these stages have their methods connected, and some of the methods go across. And the uh, conversations camper user validation we'll talk about today in the faces marked. But there are many of them, and they're, they're really good. Uh, this is a city machine uh, for scanning, uh, you know, uh, head and children. They were very afraid of it, like 80 percent of children had to be slept so that they would go into this machine. And the design innovator in that company used design thinking methods and looked really like tried to understand how kids feel and why they feel like this. And they made something like pirate adventure. And after that, this rate from 80 <laughs> percent sleeping kids in the machine had to go to 10. So it was a great success. Kids loved it. So this is example how uh, the basically design skills applied are creating very good product. And there are many jargon uh, buzzwords around uh, what we do on, on different levels, like more like generic level and strategy or more like, like in, in concrete UI. It can go like from top to bottom, basically, on a very different um, scale and it goes with different skills and maybe so one person cannot have all the skills and you have very specified UXers would do just uh, you know wireframes for example it, it depends but basically um the main thing that you need to know and i marked it with this smiley with heart so that you would remember it extra well is that uh, you need the skills um in order to understand user needs uh, you need to be good at interpreting feedback uh, that you get and also good at visualizing your thoughts so that you can collaborate with a team and go on. Uh, of course, you have to have organizational knowledge and technical understanding, talk well to uh, you know developers without talking from perspective as a UX person. And it's very important to have soft skills. So if you are a developer who wants to have a bit UX uh, part uh, in your job, uh, so it's about uh, effective communication, collaboration, adaptability, problem solving, teamwork. But it applies, I think, for all the people. So first, we have to understand what need we are solving. And in the double diamond uh, principle, basically, on the left side, we have um, the part of the project where usually most of you don't come into because if we say the scope and the you know project basically start starts in the middle here, in the red dot, um, all these four uh, before project activities they are on the left. It's like strategic thinking. Somebody came with some need and okay, let's explore it. Let's go wider in the scale. Come up with like exploration. Like okay, so what are the needs there? And they gather, 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 and then we kind of narrow down into some defined scope. And then maybe you come into project. And then you have to like ideate the solution for this, uh, you know, many, many solutions for this problem. And then, in, and then you kind of narrow down to more concrete pilot, basically. So on the left side, doing the thing right. On the right side, doing the, uh, yeah, sorry, doing the right thing and doing the thing right. And this is design thinking faces placed on this double diamond so that you orientate a little bit easier um, here, so empathize and define is in the first part, and idea prototype a test is in the second part. And you can, of course, as I said, always go back and forth. So today we start speaking about the left side, understanding the needs of end users. Empathize. Most important in this phase is open mindset. You would observe, uh, absorb information, try to be open minded, don't like make Conclusions right away, just gather the information, see the patterns. You can do it by experiencing the solution yourself. It's a very good way and cheap way to start. Just do it. Uh, you can observe, 
how other people do it. I love this one, like conversation ad hoc. I just, you know, grab somebody in the corridor and say, okay, let's go and discuss this, uh, you know, uh, web store that you're using. Can we talk about it? Also, uh, a bit more time consuming is interview, like a proper interview, especially with observators and the proper menus and so on. One technique that is good for discussing things like trying to go in the depth of the problem is like asking why. You can use it also with business. You can ask like, okay, uh, we need to create app and you say, okay, why? Well, because apps, uh, you know, sell uh, uh, well and uh, everybody has apps. Why everybody has apps? And then you kind of go on until you get down to the root of the problem. Okay, you maybe end up just understanding you don't need an app. Uh, another technique is empathy map canvas. So uh, gathering um, by type uh, feedback from uh, a person, like what they say and do, what is their pains, gains, and what they think and feel and so on. Uh, also surveyors are pretty good. Actually, this is a sur survey, like a form that was sent out to uh, designers in Norway. And they answered that the most important quality that designers need to have is empathy. So it's marked orange here. It's not the, you know, technical understanding. You see that's graded with 2%, but empathy. Also, I like to check like ratings. Let's say if there is an app, you can see the ratings. It's good to check ratings if you're actually owning the app or owning the service, because in this case, you see there is like some, you know, twos and ones. And when you see uh, what's written there, you understand, okay, so it's just the last year when we didn't add any extra cool production in the app. Now it got a bit down and the, because it doesn't support this iPhone 7. But before that, ratings were fine, for example. So you, you can also see and you know, one bad rating just gets the whole curve down. So be a bit also realistic to what they mean, but it's good to check. I also love talking to customer service because they usually know why people call and what's their biggest pains especially in B2B setting. Also, very cool thing is uh, not so human centric, but still very important, checking different numbers, numbers from database, web uh, trackings uh, with via Google Analytics, Stelium or whatever tools you're using, combining it with other insight that you gathered, which is like, this is more like quantitative insight and talking to people is more like qualitative. And then you can use more like desktop research, but as only as a supplement, because in design thinking is a centric approach. You have to like start with a person, not with some kind of documents, online searches. Um, and you can always validate all these findings against business case if you just drown in data. So understanding the challenge you're solving better will lead to the solution that covers the actual need. This will lead to meaningful delivery and good customer relationship. So uh, learn to focus on users first and find out what they think and why. And then you go to narrowing down your, you know, all this uh, exciting uh, data that you got into like defining the scope again, redefining basically the problem. Maybe you completely had to change the focus. So you're doing the synthesis analysis, you summarize findings, gains and pains. I'll not talk so much about it this part uh, today but you just have to know that. And then you go into this, okay, so we are really solving something. And then you think about, is this a good solution that we're creating? So first you of course have to come up with solutions. So, so first you do this uh, brainstorming the many, many ideas in explorative way, and then you will do the prototypes and test them and you'll repeat. So I dating. Uh, so just like go wild, brainstorm lots of solutions. The average person has about, you know, 12 to 60,000 thoughts per day. This is amazing. So just like use it for what you can. Yeah, go wild. Um, now I have a creative challenge for you. So take a paper and pen. And we will make a little task that will take two minutes. Please brainstorm as many ideas as possible on the paper, just as fast as you can, for little things that could be inside of Kinder Egg that would be practical and exciting for kids in the ninth century in the Viking age in Norway. So just like 
come up with some ideas. What can be inside, you know, of like kind of kinder egg and Viking age, like maybe like, you know, flower in a nut uh, or just write it down. Time started. More ideas, more ideas, go wild. Good, good. Brainstorm more. I finally found where the chat is. That's good. Hello, people. More ideas. Okay, now, now. Now, the thing is that when you start brainstorming, you have a lot of good ideas, and then you're going empty. And then, in the end, it comes a like crazy idea. You get 15 more seconds. Good. So now you created some, if you have some really cool solutions, put them in the chat. So now um, we will also look at scamper method. This is very cool ideating method. Basically what you do with your project uh, problem or with the kinder egg situation that you can drag it into different directions. For example, um, we have Snickers, original project product you can substitute it by adding almonds or you can combine it with something else like other type of you know unhealthy sugar stuff uh, or you can for example adapt it like make some limited addition with more nuts or you can modify it make it into ice cream with the sneakers or you can make it as pieces that you use in baking, this is meant put to another use. Or you can eliminate it completely, uh, just make something like, okay, no sneakers really, like something else there. Or you can reverse it, okay, make it actually into some kind of healthy product and with a sneakers taste. I don't know if that's healthy really, but as idea, uh, right? So you can use it for your Kinder egg thingy, try to like drag that idea even further. For example, combine it with something or reverse it, maybe put it inside out. You have one more minute. Okay, if, if you have any good uh, ideas, just uh, put them in the chat here um, and I'll see it. It might be not so easy to find the chat. <laughs> yeah, carved wooden spanning top, colorful stone arrowheads, doll made out of acorns. <laughs> acorns, cool. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, arrowheads, that's cool. That's probably very useful for kids in the ninth, ninth century. Sugar cube. Yeah, I think the kids would like that. Hmm. Carved runes. Yeah, that's really cool. They can like play with them and learn to read. Just a candy. <laughs> 
because they lack eating at the time. Yeah, yeah, that's true. They needed food all the time. Uh huh. In your experience, while well, brainstorming ideas, should subject matter expert be in the room? Uh, depends. Um, you know, if you are like uh, brainstorming, in my experience, it's very important to give people time to brainstorm on their own first before they hear other opinions because it's extremely quickly to get called by other opinions. You just drag them out of the door and just go with that idea, which is great. You have to build up on other ideas, but just give people like five minutes to brainstorm for themselves. It goes on any task. Think for yourself, make notes on the posters in total silence, and then, you know, discuss and like, you know, grow on them. Uh, and, and expert, it depends what kind of workshop, what kind of like team it is. Um, you know, we can do both maybe I, I don't know the situation taught us um battle axe yeah so small one you can put it in the kinder egg uh-huh collectible animal letters mm. yeah that could be cool like collecting hmm like instead of football cards they collect this okay great great so next uh prototype next phase uh, now we have to like prototype these ideas actually make them okay go make them <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, we, we'll just look a bit quickly here. So you can have like a scenario, like, okay, like this happens, like in a, you know, illustrated book, that happens, this happens and goes on. You can have like user flow. Uh, we use a lot of user flow in Miro today with my customer. Um, we just use Miro for any kind of collaboration. Wireframes, low fidelity. So like something a bit simple it can be even paper uh, or like very high, you know, like, uh, very abstract uh, sketch just to I also used to have a board where I like used pens in old days when we didn't sit at home um, this is like interactive low fidelity prototype but it's a bit actually more work than you think because just to cut this off and do this it's a bit time confusing uh, consuming but uh, yeah uh, most typical prototype is like high fidelity in these tools we actually used PowerPoint because we could share it via team. So we just used some collage in PowerPoint on the early stage of the project. And then we moved to Miro. And then we had to use all these other tools like, you know, uh, for one channel, one tool, for another channel, another tool, depending on your project. But uh, it's actually good to use high fidelity because then that's what you test. I mean, you can actually, you don't need to make a clickable prototype. I mean, you can if you want, but uh, you can test on steel screens. We test on steel screens in Miro. So we just add things and then we kind of walk the people uh, through it. I usually get um, people to test on from my colleagues or from people around whom I see in the corridors or like outside of the building, you know, um, you know, your spouse, um, somebody who hasn't uh, been so much into this, you know, team, basically. It doesn't have to be a uh, preferably not expert in that. Use it on your mom. They usually have lots of problems seeing the color contrast and stuff and sizes. So if a picture is worth 1,000 words, a prototype is worth 1,000 meetings. Uh, so yeah, create a prototype. Don't polish it. Just create something and start validating. As I said, we validate it on PowerPoint, guys. And then you test. So how you test? And why you test? Uh, you test to find the flaws in your solution. You can improve the ideas that you already have. And you can actually also discover even bigger possibilities that you haven't had. And you can also educate the users by testing on them because actually, ah, oh, they learn, okay, this is how it works in this uh, store online. You can also use the results of user tests in, in argumentation with the customers. Semi-precious stones of or gold yeah that would i would like that one <laughs> yeah cool i'm just reading more answers here yes ad hoc testing i this is my favorite because i just grab somebody on the street or in the inside office doing some other stuff who is not in the team i uh, either ask them to do the in production or the pre-production here you have um, sketch opened on my mac and I connect it to the telephone. It has to be iPhone, actually, to, to connect to Sketch. 
And then I can, we have, for example, two people, I'm like talking to the user and somebody else is doing the tweaks as we go because it's possible to use sketch quickly and just like, because a customer says, okay, I'd like something else like that. And then we just do it like, like this. Yes, like that. So usually this test takes like 15 minutes for me. And uh, one more, it can be moderated user test, as I said, also like some people sit in another room and others observe or like one is uh, interviewer, one is observer, and then there is a user and so on. Uh, or you can have this unmoderated user test that you create all the tasks ahead, all the prototypes are clickable and working, for example, or they can be just still screens, but you have to write a very good description on them that people who are like recruited by these different companies, there are many of them we use test on in Norway because it's Norwegian users. Um, and um, you can even like uh, choose type of segments and so on. Uh, yeah, but but it also takes a lot of preparations uh, to just make this test. So I prefer rather user validating on the go. Maybe I'll do just two tests this sprint, two tests another sprint. But then I like always improve my idea, and I, you know I don't need to ask any money from you know a leadership. Like okay, can we have like this? Uh, you know, can we use this recruitment bureau for recruiting the users? I just do it dirty quickly. Yeah. You can also do A-B test, but that's usually for the product situations, right? Um, so very quickly, validation guide for you, how you talk to users, okay? As a UX person, I would love you to like do this now in peers, but since the, this is the format we have, so just try to hear it. So as a UX person or whatever person who needs the insight, you ask questions, you listen and observe. and as a user, you have to just basically use the application and think loud, right? So I always start with like asking a little bit about like, okay, your background, if I'm testing the financial services in Aircom, I'm saying, oh yeah, are you using like uh, this uh, service uh, online? Yeah, you bought there something like washing machine, oh good. What did you use? Did you use card or like did you use like other type of payments? So we talk a little bit about that. We talk about the banks they have. And then I know, okay, so this person is a pro user or now this person actually never bought anything on that payment that I'm working with. So let's see how I can make it interesting for him to buy it via that method. But when I when we look at the application at the screens, for example, I share my mirror board and I just zoom in into that screen. The first step I ask, okay, so what do you see here? And then just let them talk, like let them talk about what they see and what they look first. And, and you know, I don't care really about that part because I'm designing the little box underneath and there is other teams doing the rest, but I still have to go through this and get the in, this input. And I'll of course send it to those teams. Okay, so what do you do next? Um, okay, is there something that looks tempting? What about if, if you know, okay, now I really need the person to, to do something, okay, find that find that pc or something yeah and then i ask okay so how was it the experience of like searching for this do you have any other remarks just like you just create open questions not like dead end questions okay um any of you who've been doing this kind of um, things, because the, you can write in the chat if you've been doing this interview guides. There resists many, like this is just something I found online. This is interview guide, like um, for example, um, this is like extra follow-up questions basically. And also remember that if you are recording the session, I don't because I don't have lifetime to watch the recordings and also don't want to think about uh, you know, uh, privacy and like storing this data. But if you do, you have to have routines, how to delete this data. I usually like set if it needs to be recorded, like two weeks max as auto delete, unless I do something else, inform the customer about it. And of course they have to sign some documents ahead of testing if it's a serious test, not like the one I do in the corridors. In that one, I just say, this is like we're testing solution, not you. Any, your feedback is extremely valuable. Uh, you always like are super happy in the end and like really appreciate the contribution. Uh, if it's more like formal setup, you have like some documents like, okay, they have to sign some legal documents around it. And um, and maybe if they receive some compensation for joining, they also have to sign that, that they receive the money and so on. Okay. Um, 
so now we validated the solution, right? And now we have to improve it. We have to improve designs. Um, we can continue. We can test it on more users, talk to developers, stakeholders, like ongoing basically dialogue. The way I do it, I usually facilitate like UX print reviews every second week where we gather like stakeholders and, you know, team and whoever needs to join to just see where we are. It is used both to like basically get some alignment, to get some positivity, like more like empathy for what we do, also keep them informed and also to decide something. Let's say, I actually don't know how to solve this, which, which is better, A or B, and then they come up with some argumentation that I can use. Okay, and, and at some point, of course, you have to finalize the designs because good enough has to be good enough. You cannot like go on forever, right? Uh, and you iterate. Um, because uh, there is no such thing as perfect user experience. So, uh, because, you know, like the Google, you see in 97, they had a pretty, okay, ugly prototype here on the left. And at the time it looked very boring page for us because all the other pages were like, ooh. And then they kind of, as you see, started like minimizing and minimizing, like getting more minimalistic and like less, uh, you know, noise. So this is um, good evolution, right? Just evolves. I mean, I'm interesting how it will look in five years or ten years. So the normal stage of matters for like any project or anything is like things change, right? You just just keep in peace with that idea. Things change. They will change. Maybe your project in one year is not even there anymore. Uh, I was working for a fantastic cool bank and everything was so interesting and we were like, doing extremely good process. We had like great backlog with a lot of things we wanted to push to customers when we are able to and so on. And then suddenly we got bought up. And then everything we did, we had to like just rebrand to another thing and then like probably move it to another backend in addition. So everything was like whew, gone. So yeah, you, you're just there, have fun, you know, enjoy the process uh, of being in the team that you are. Um, be extremely interested in like what users think about things. And um, try to gather as much insight as possible about uh, how, how they do it, because you want to create a pro uh, you know, some kind of product or service that they love. You want them to be happy and satisfied, right? And, and use their time efficiently. So um, I will open up for like, uh, please add the questions in the chat about anything that we talked about, anything uh, you want to ask around uh, design, UX, uh, service design, uh, user validation, ideation, or uh, other questions, please. Um, and um, yeah, I'm waiting for your questions basically. So. To summarize, we have like about 10 minutes for questions. Uh, first of all, think about what need are we solving, right? That's the first thing always. Uh, of course, orientate a little bit in the project when you come there, like maybe it's already thought, you know, somebody knows it already. It's just you who don't know, right? That's also might be the case. And try to really empathize with it and understand. And then uh, when you manage to come up with some solutions, you try to make sure if they're good ones. So you do it by continuously validating it with the users. If you're creating some you know, financial service as I'm creating, so we had to validate it both with the sellers in the store that use one channel, you know, digital channel, we validated it with the end users, which also use another channel with a bit different information and interface. We validated it with people who work in the back office, uh, who are actually gonna use the financial calculator to create these offers, right? And, and with, of course, uh, more, but most important was the this big bunch of end users, uh, because that is like, which makes this success or not. If the sellers think the tool is difficult to use or not understandable enough, then then it's hard. If the end customer is not just able to proceed through these thousands of different steps in the form, in the checkout, then they'll use another method, right? So 
all, all this is about trying to empathize and make it as relevant as possible, right? Okay, um, so anybody came up with um, better, more, more creative, crazy solutions for the Viking kinder eggs in ninth century? No? Okay, um, but uh, yeah, ask questions. So now we can uh, start the question uh, round. I just wonder, um, anybody here who is a developer, just write developer in the chat. I want to know how far or close to UX you are. No developers, are you doing UX? Or maybe doing project management? No? Yeah, there are some questions I see. Is there any super simple online tool to do web page mobile screen prototype for developer? Yes, Figma. Figma. Because it is used both by designers and by developers because you can open it in the same tool and then the CSS is kind of ready, <laughs> not like totally ready but it's it's like and it's super simple sketch is also super simple you just download some templates for like mobile and tablet and stuff and they just like populate and it, i think it took me like a day to learn sketch before that before sketch came we were using adobe or like uh, other tools and then those are much heavier and harder sketch is so simple and figma is more trending figma is uh, very good we used a sketch and when we pushed the spec to the developers, we pushed it to Zeppelin because it just gives you the basically pixel perfect, you know, all the spec there from sketch to Zeppelin. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if anybody used Figma here, but I, I hope you did because that's what, what we mainly currently going to in Norway in the design, uh, different design kind of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, is there any simple online tool to do a web page mobile screen prototype for developers? Yeah, that I answered. Any tips how to apply all these practices to all projects with already terrible existing? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Of course, most of the projects are not so uh, you know agile and you know uh, exciting in the, in this way. But the the start is you. I don't know, Carolis, if you are UX or if you're a developer. I usually start by like creating the UX review, sprint review sessions every second week, call in for one hour and make a, invest a lot of time making a good PowerPoint presentation basically on different topics that we're designing this, uh, you know, sprint. Well, sprint, two weeks, it doesn't matter. Call, call it whatever you want. But um, uh, just like to discuss things, make different topics you want to discuss, different to discuss. You're talking about terrible UI. It might be that you have a very bad, like, or not existing design system, right? Um, yes, basically, if, if you are personally, Carolis, if you are UX, you can actually just redesign things in a way that makes it easy to apply for developers. So in order to do that, I think you need to do some pages that look much better than the old pages and show it to somebody who has a decision power in the company, not like developer, but some kind of business person, right? And see, well, we designed that, yeah? I talk to developers and they say it's not difficult to do. Doesn't take so much time. Can we just redesign the whole thing? I mean, if you'll come up with this proposal and you will show that this is feasible, that it's, you know, doesn't break the code heavily. It doesn't like add intensely much, you know, hours of work, but it actually improves the user experience. Then you will get, yes, of course, you need to like make some kind of prototypes, right? To show them, people think when they see, right? So when you do a couple of this, you say, okay. And then you have some argumentation. So first we will have a better user experience. People will find the solution more appealing. 
second uh, we will be able to better maintain this code because we will actually go from the existing design system or that, that we don't have into for example i don't know what you're going to use material design or atomic design or wh whatever that, that you will use as a basis just to reuse existing things i mean old times you know 20 years ago we were like doing the websites nobody understands and that was cool this time nobody really cares about something special everybody wants something that they know how to use from before something conventional and of course if you are like able to reach that then you will improve your designs because you're not talking even about like how to make it wow you're just talking from coming from like place where it's like really old so we have to investigate on like what's the state of development there is there any resources there is there anybody who is able to do that and then you talk to people and just come up with this idea. I mean, gather some information on it, gather like some argumentation. And maybe, you know, you'll be like a star in the company that <laughs> you will actually propose something that's, uh, maybe you're not even designer, but you will like bring, bring up the need. Get some six interviews with users of your, you know, application and see how they react to it because there exists some very old and ugly designs in Norway also on the very big like uh, membership applications that look like DOS you know, or something. But you know, uh, those expert users are all just 10. They're just that. They take three years to learn the application, but then when they learn it, they don't want anything else. And if you just redesign it, they will hate you for the rest of their lives. So like, you know, orientate a bit like, is there really a need or it's just like, okay, it's bad, but yeah. Nobody really prioritized in the business to do the redesign. Because um, in Norway, we have a bit too hype redesign. Many companies just redesign, change names into very bad names and like use a lot of money on like changing everything from like, okay, clothes, workers' clothes into like, all the digital solutions that have to be redesigned. Uh, but then, of course, they use that as a possibility to improve actually the things users care about like for example navigation or well depends of course on the scope of the project um yeah i don't know if i answered your question carlis or, or you want me to say two words more about it uh, more questions yeah i see many developers that's good so i i don't know if you're back end or front end uh developers but i find it that developers um usually you know don't have time for too much participation with ux but at least in the times when we need clarifications we're always together and also uh when when we have sprint to review on ux they always there uh, to to see like what we're working on it completely depends like how big is your team um how is it set up what kind of product team or is it like just some waterfall project with the specifications had and you just have to survive through this uh, you know time slots mm. so as a developer because many of you are guys um just take the existing production and show it to the users and see how they use it if there is like some questions you wonder about guide them in a natural way to that part and see how they use it. Maybe you're just afraid of something that is not there, you know? Depends what's your purpose. Are you there to like, you know, find the mistakes? Are you there to see the possibilities? Uh, are you there to just like generally improve something? I, yeah, I, I find this talking to the people all the time very useful because then I can all the time get a fresh, uh, you know, input. And I know, okay, this is this this one we heard before. This one we heard before. This everybody wants this. Okay, let's just prioritize it somewhere. Mm. Yes. Uh, so yeah, and remember, using design methods is gonna accelerate your you know innovation and sellability of the solution and uh, basically everything. So it's very important that you are open-minded, that you are like helping out to build something together. More people together is always better solution. And together with the users, together with the stakeholders, uh, you know, the business partners, whoever is in your complex old, you know, system. I've seen very old systems still. It's, it's hard. It's very hard. Choose your battles. Choose that something that you really care about. 
I would say that has to be user experience on the customer, the end user. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now our time has ended. So we are at 10.50. I was asked to end the session. So yeah, thank you very much. I'm sending you big love, Achu, Spasiba, uh, uh in, in all the languages. Just uh, reach out if you have any questions directly to me. Um, you can reach out on LinkedIn, add me there. Um, or uh, I don't know if I'll see this chat later on, probably not. But anyway, thank you very much for participation and active participation, creating very cool uh, Kinder eggs for uh, Vikings. You used ideation. And remember, user in the center. Bye.